Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Amita. Join me weekly as I talk to guests who will share their success stories and inspire us with transformational events. Our guest today has previously appeared on our show. She is a female political and community leader who is making a huge difference in the community, including the South Asian community. It's my pleasure to welcome once again back to our show, the mayor of Brampton, Ms. Linda Jeffrey. Thank you for coming to talk to us today, Mayor. Nice to come back. And uh, we are excited to find out about all the initiatives that have come into place since you have taken office. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's exciting because Brampton is quite in the limelight these days. But before that, tell us a little bit about your experience and your career before you took office. Well, I think uh, like a lot of people in my community, I volunteered. So I began volunteering uh, when my children were young, mostly to get out of the house because mm -hmm. my children were, I had three little boys and I wanted to be a grown up. So I volunteered in my community and then my mayor drowned. So Ken Willens was the mayor of Brampton mm -hmm. at the time and he went to Prince Edward Island and unfortunately lost his life. And then there became vacancies in City Hall. And um, the people who I knew were running for the vacancy for aldermen at the time um, I didn't think they had very good ideas. I thought I could do a better job. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I said to my husband, I don't think they're the right people for the job. And he said, well, maybe you should run. And I went, maybe I will. <laughs> so that was the beginning. I mm -hmm. ran for the first time and I was on council for 12 years. And uh, then I got mad again. I didn't like what was happening at the province. And at the time, the city of Brampton was probably 300,000 people. And we had one hospital. And uh, for those uh, who, in your audience, who know Brampton at the time, Peel Memorial had one hospital. It was, um, nobody had put any money into it. And every time you needed service, you actually had to leave Brampton and go to Toronto, go to Mississauga, somewhere else for your service. Mm -hmm. It needed to be closer to home. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went to the province to get better health care for Brampton. And now we have Brampton Civic, we have Peel Memorial, and we have Erin Oak Kids, which is about to open. But I'm still not satisfied. I want more health care. And I also went down to the province to get uh, a highway. So 410 Highway mm. is, is really um, the major north-south route in my city that connects the city and all of the people who do logistics uh, to the rest of the GTA. So that was why I went to the province. And I was lucky enough. I served in cabinet uh, as uh, minister responsible for seniors, uh, labor, um, at the beginning, I served uh, as Natural Resources Minister, and at the end, I served as the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and the Chair of Cabinet. So that was a great job, very interesting. But after about 11 years, uh, people started calling me and saying, you need to come back. Brampton needs leadership and somebody who understands how the province, how the city works to help us put us in a better direction. So two years ago, uh, I was convinced to put my name on the ballot and, and run in Brampton and the people of Brampton gave me a very strong mandate to do things differently, and that's what I've been trying to do for the last two years. Love it. I love the passion that is quite obvious in what you say, as you call it, my city. And I like the fact that you always challenge the status quo and, you know, take it forward. And that's why Brampton is where it is today. And Brampton is lucky to have you, Mayor. Thank you. So since you have taken office, uh, what are some of the initiatives that you have been part of? Well, one of the things you do when you decide you're going to become mayor or wherever you run, if you run municipally, provincially or federally, you have to have a mandate. You have to have a platform of things that you think you're going to do that you're going to try to succeed in achieving during your term, whether it's three years or four years. In my case, uh, one of the things that um, bothered me about what was happening at City Hall mm. was there wasn't a lot of accountability and transparency. Um, the public was treated as an afterthought. They're my boss. Mm. I need them to know what I'm doing. So one of the things that was controversial before I got elected was how much the mayor was paid. So one of the things I talked about mm. in the election was I said that I would lower my salary. So one of the first things I did is I went in and lowered my salary by $50,000. Not just the first year, but mm. every year that I am mayor in the first term, I would lower my salary. So that's one of the mm. first things I did. Um, uh, the other thing I talked about was uh, the finances at City. Uh, many of the councillors felt that we were in a good position. My old job as the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, I dealt with 444 municipalities across Ontario. I knew the good players. 
I knew the people who were using best practices. Brampton wasn't in that list. Mm -hmm. We needed to change the way we did our finances. The other problem is we're a very fast growing city, need infrastructure, need to repair the buildings we own. Half of the buildings that the city of Brampton manages are 50 years and older. If you don't take care of the stock, the buildings don't, don't retain their value. So my job was to try and um, get a sense, of, a stock taking of where we were in our facilities, what needed to be repaired and what didn't. Not only did the infrastructure of the city needed to be repaired, the reputation of the city needed to be repaired. Mm. Uh, when I was running, probably, actually everybody on council, including the mayor, were under a criminal investigation regarding their expenses. Okay. You can't be electing people you don't have confidence in to run their expenses and ask them to run your city. Mm. That's the challenge. We needed to be um, more responsible to the taxpayer to let them know how their taxes were being collected, how they were being spent, and give them confidence not only to the people who live in Brampton, but the people who want to invest there. Mm. So those were some of the things we did at the very beginning. Mm. Wow, uh, your experience is vast, as we already heard, but it all really sounds like you're doing a lot of research while in office too. Yeah. Now, uh, is it just you or you have your team doing this research for you? Because you do come up with like, you know, facts. It's not like throwing stuff in the air. It yeah. sounds real. So. so one of the things you have to do, it, it, so there are two types of people that work at City Hall. There's people who work in my office uh, and the elected politicians. We all sit for, for four years. And the, the team that I have in my office are, are people that if I lose my job, they lose their job. So they're very motivated to make sure we deliver on what we say we're gonna do. The elected officials essentially hire one person, the city manager, who delivers all of the services. We as politicians set the policies, when we cut the grass, when we plow the snow, uh, how soon the fire truck comes to your door. Those are the services we decide on the policy, how long, uh, and, and, and all the, the parameters around that decision, and the bureaucrats deliver the services. In order to be good politicians, you need to do your homework. Mm. You need to work with other municipalities to get the, the best ideas. And as your community changes, sometimes what used to work before, you need to think it over. Does it work better for your uh, residents? So one of the things that many of our residents are frustrated with is the speed at which we approve applications. So now we're trying to speed the applications. If you come in and you want to make a change on your property, you want to grow your business, you should have an answer within days so that you can get the trades in to do it. You want to put up a, a, a new section of your business. You're building a bakery. You want to get all the approvals quickly so you can get on the ground and start making money to pay the taxes to the city. So my job is not only to work within City Hall, but outside, mm -hmm. working with other mayors. So I'm part of the region appeal. Uh, mayor Crombie, Mayor Thompson are all mm -hmm. part of that region, uh, working well with the, the Premier of Ontario, having uh, ministers come out to Brampton to make announcements to have us as a, as a showpiece, uh, uh, we, we try to be uh, the place where they try pilots and try new ideas in Brampton. And also we want to work closely with our federal counterparts. Um, the Prime Minister has been to Brampton three times. Wow. We have five MPs in Brampton that are new. We work closely with them. We probably talk with them once a week, sometimes more often. They are great advocates for us federally, and we want to make sure we work with our provincial counterparts as they create their budget, are they thinking about high growth communities? Are they making sure we have the resources we need? Because those three levels of government are all part of building a good quality of life for my residents in Brampton. Amazing, so it, everybody's coming together to make uh, you know the province, the country yep. great on a whole. But now we want to find out more about how Brampton is doing so well uh, in, while you're in office. So we'll find out more, but before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to the mayor of Brampton, Ms. Linda Jeffrey. So now we want to find out about what all is happening in Brampton, because as I already said, uh, it's becoming a well-known uh, community these days. So one of the things we talked about, one of the, the, I guess the pivotal pieces of how to grow your city is to keep it vital and active. 
And some of the things that really help it are education mm -hmm. and transit. Mm -hmm. So those are probably the two big initiatives that I've been working on since I got elected and working with the provincial and the federal government. So we have a GO train line in the middle of the city. We're between Kitchener-Waterloo and Toronto. That location in the middle puts us in a very good place. Our proximity to the airport is also very important. So anybody who's involved in logistics, um, people in the taxi industry, people who uh, have to get goods to market, those transit lines matter. So I've been trying to get extra transit uh, to our GO line. And uh, certainly in the first year, we had a conversation about light rail transit. Mm -hmm. um, my council, the majority, voted against having uh, a, an LRT that connected Mississauga to Brampton. So we will actually be building the line now to Steeles Avenue, but not to our downtown. Mm. Um, I, I still believe that that was the wrong decision. Mm. Um, it is something that I will pursue in the future because I think having good transit is a sign of a big city, mm -hmm. a good city. And it's also an affordability issue. If you're a newcomer or if you're a student or if you're a senior, you can't necessarily afford a car. So having good transits you can rely on to get to the doctor, to get to the place of worship, to get to school, they're all important. And we can, any way we can make it affordable and reasonable for you, it makes for a better city. Mm -hmm. So getting better transit is something that I've been working on. Uh, we just had an announcement last spring with the Prime Minister and the province of Ontario, uh, $1.8 billion in that, uh, that rail line. Rapid Express Rail will be something that we'll be focusing on uh, in the coming years to make sure, because right now we have uh, trains that are commuter trains, but they're competing with freight. Mm. So you need the two to be able to work successfully and not competing with each other. Mm. So any way that we can move transit, we've gotten uh, significant financial resources from the province for better bus systems. Um, so that's that the transit piece is something we're working on. We've made great progress. We can even do better, but I think we are one of the fastest growing. I think. We grew by 9% last year. Nice. There are very few transit systems that grow that quickly. The beauty is if people use it, we put more money into it. Mm. So it can yeah. become more convenient, more affordable, uh, and easier for everybody to use. The other thing that I want for the city of Brampton is that if you don't keep your young people close to home, they go away to school and they don't come back mm, because the jobs it. aren't there. Yeah. We're a city that my South Asian community used to call. I hope they don't do it anymore. Yeah. A sleeping city. Mm. You buy a house, you sleep there, you go out to work or school, you come back to sleep. Mm. Brampton needs to be more than a sleeping city. Mm. We need to have a great university, we need to have great jobs, we have great entertainment and culture. And as you and I were talking before the show, we have some great restaurants that are opening with live music, we have wonderful dancers and singers, we have people making movies in Brampton. They're proud of the place that they live and they want to bring that culture to a a, a city that really enjoys it. Uh, we're, in, we get, we're getting guests from all over the world who come here and they come and they feel so comfortable because mm -hmm. it's just like home. So we were, as a city in the past, trying to get a university. The city didn't put the right application together mm. in the last term. This term, I was determined to make sure we didn't uh, fail again. So we went, I got elected and created something called a blue ribbon panel. Mm -hmm. Brought a whole group of people smarter than I am in the education sector uh, to come and put together a good application. We went out, we sought uh, applicants, different universities from all over Ontario to try and find the right one. And the fit was Ryerson. Mm. It's a cool university. And it's, <laughs> whenever I tell people, they're like, oh, Ryerson, they've never had a campus anywhere else. Well, they're building one in Brampton. Mm. They are very ambitious. Um, they are going to do things that are very different. They're, um, they have already a great business school, a great engineering school. They aspire to have a law school and a faculty of medicine. Nice. I think the faculty of medicine might be a good fit for Brampton, but they're also trying to think of where education is going in the future. They're looking at cybersecurity, uh, which w was very interesting to a lot of our high-tech industries in Brampton as well as the food services industry. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to complement an existing set of businesses of, that have made Brampton home, but also attracting some new ones. So Ryerson is going to be bringing forward an application uh, and a, a location that they want to be in. 
uh, in the in the probably in the late fall of this year. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll be, have another chat off. about it. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, if if my young people want to go to school there, it'll make for a much more exciting place because they'll mm -hmm. bring speakers and music and innovation. And to me, that's my future. The right. young people will really make Brampton exciting and fun to be around. I love your vision and the fact that uh, you know your vision targets different age groups and what is very important to every person as well. Yeah. Uh, now the other thing about Brampton, uh, we have been talking about uh, the uh, South Asian community, but the demographics have changed, as you told me, since you took office. Oh, so yeah. it's uh, it is definitely a vibrant multicultural community. But how has it changed since you took office? So when I first got elected in 1991, I would say the area that I represented, which was the north part of Brampton Heart Lake, uh, primarily Portuguese Italian was the the major demographic at the time. Um, complete change now. I would say. Uh, at least half of my community now is South Asian. Mm -hmm. um, I think we speak um, over 80 languages in the city. Um, a lot of different groups have made Brampton their home. Uh, you can see it uh, in the number of storefronts, different languages. You can get anything to eat you want anywhere in the city mm -hmm. at any time of the day. Um, it's, it's vibrant, it's exciting. And, um, you know, I've been able to travel in the course of my job and wherever I go I meet people no matter where I am in the world who know somebody in Brampton or they have relatives in Brampton so that's a great door opener it really mm -hmm. it helps you because people already like people who are from Canada mm -hmm. I think Canada has a great reputation and the fact that we already have people who can open doors for us in Brampton who live here who have been successful really makes my job so much easier so for me uh, the majority of my staff are South Asian and uh, I get to go to a lot of melas and weddings, and um, uh, I get to go to the gurdwaras, and uh, it's a great it's a great community, mm -hmm. very generous. Um, they're the first people to step forward when there's any kind of crisis anywhere in Canada, mm -hmm. um, and they they do blood donor drives. They are very generous. They give to the hospital. Their their philanthropy is extraordinary and their leadership in our community has made it a better place. Well said. Well, I want to be in Brampton right now from what you're saying, and it's like a mini world in Brampton. Yep. We want to find out more, but before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to the mayor of vibrant Brampton, Miss Linda Jeffrey. So, uh, so glad to hear how Brampton is so doing so well uh, while you're in office. I'm going to ask you now one question. So we talked about how Brampton is multicultural. Demographics have changed. It has become mostly South Asian, but there's still other communities out there. Yes. I was wondering, when you approach the different communities, are there any challenges? Is it like a... Uh, one approach for all, or do you have to customize it to different cultures? I think one of the challenges when I first uh, became mayor was the lack of translation that mm. we were doing as a city. So it was one of the things I brought to council, and um, I asked them to translate everything into probably 10 languages. Uh, wow. They didn't have the comfort level to do that. So we, we've done about half of the languages now that we need to do. Uh, maybe in future budgets, they'll, they'll get braver and want to do more. But I felt there, was, there needed to be more community engagement um, as, as much as possible to translate because we have a lot of seniors. Mm. And as you get older, you want to use the language you're more comfortable with. And in an emergency, I want to make sure my seniors know what to do. Mm. So things like the ice storm uh, almost paralyzed our city. And a lot of seniors were home. They didn't know what to do. And, and the more translation you can do, the better. Um, I wouldn't say one size fits all. I think it's my job to do as much outreach as possible, along with the 10 other councillors, to get to know the neighbourhoods, to see how things are changing. Because I think what our job is to take the pulse. Are mm. things changing? In the, uh, you want to be having what doctors call a well baby visit. Mm. You want to keep talking to people while things are good. Because if something goes sideways or something happens in your neighbourhood, you want to feel comfortable that you can talk to your politician, not just when things are good, but when things aren't working, if you're afraid about crime in your neighborhood 
or something is happening that makes you uncomfortable, because we have had some very difficult issues in the community. I had to speak out just this year about um, prayer in uh, classrooms by the Muslim students. Mm. Um, my job is to speak for 600,000 people across the city, to stand up, to be the advocate for all of my residents. And uh, so that's a challenge, to find that right voice. So I try to get out to as many events as I can, not just for the photo ops, which mm. obviously there's lots of celebrations in our community, whether it's weddings or babies or graduations. They're wonderful, new business openings. But I also want to know when things are working and when they're not working. Because mm. it's our job to provide a good quality of life and to make sure that the taxes that we collect are being spent properly. Mm. So I try to do as much of that as possible, but I'm always looking for new ideas. One of the things we tried in our last budget was something called a telephone town hall to call people while we were doing our budget. So you could sit in your living room or your kitchen or your car and listen on your phone, not driving while you're, you're <laughs> no. texting, but to listen to what we were talking about with the budget. If you had a question, you're not the only person who's asking that question. Why do you plow the streets this way? When do you decide to cut the grass? Why do the fire trucks come every four minutes? Why not longer? Maybe we could save some money. So if we can answer those questions, then you are the better consumer. I think it's incumbent upon us to do that. We got great feedback. People loved that because it was convenient. They mm -hmm. don't want to come to City Hall. They're busy. They're taking their kids to soccer or to karate or, or they're going to the doctor or they're helping a neighbor. Uh, their hours are shift work. Mm -hmm. They can't come to City Hall. So how can we be more convenient to them mm -hmm. to deliver services they need and get answers that they need? So I'm always looking for those ways to deliver it better, um, and I'm open to suggestions. Very well said. Well, wow, such a dynamic process, and we know uh, Brampton is in the right hands with you, Mayor. Thank you. I'm going to digress for a bit now. It uh, sounds like there's a lot on your plate, and uh, you keep uh, you know, aiming for higher and higher and for the yeah. betterment of the community. What about time for yourself? Do you have some time for yourself um, it's when you're a mayor, you're a mayor all the time. So mm. you're kind of on duty all the time. And occasionally, um, I do get away for a week. Um, I went away and, um, combined a business trip with some vacation, went to California just recently. I still doing work while I was away, oh. but, um, I like running. Try, so I try to, uh, run on my treadmill. I like reading. Mm -hmm. I like going to the movies. So I like shopping, um, mm -hmm. uh, like most ladies, um, and I like spending time with my grandchildren. I have three grandchildren, two granddaughters and a grandson. Nice. And um, they currently all live in Brampton, so they're not too far away. And I've just moved my parents from uh, a small town in uh, southern Ontario to Brampton. Mm -hmm. So they're nice and close. They haven't had the greatest health, so I've been a daughter mm -hmm. uh, managing with them. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of like a lot of my residents. We're sandwiched between children grandchildren, parents, and, and trying to make sure that everybody's healthy and happy. And so um, it's a little bit of juggling, but everybody does the same. They, they have the same kind of challenges I do. Well, you're a true role model. You know, you, you are also a true community leader who connects with the people rather than staying up in the higher corporate position and not, you know, researching. You do everything so well. So we have been so inspired by everything you have told us today and so inspired that uh, Brampton is doing so well. Uh, we have viewers who I'm sure aspire to be like you someday. Do you have any words of advice for them? You know, I, I, I would say once a week somebody comes up to me and asks how to get into politics. Uh, I would say the best way, the way I got involved is to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in uh, election campaigns and you like a candidate, go help them. Mm -hmm. So this coming year, we have a provincial election next June in 2018. And following that will be the municipal election. Mm -hmm. In order to be a good politician, it helps to watch somebody do the job and learn what they do. Sometimes you learn things you don't like. That's mm -hmm. a good learning opportunity. And sometimes you learn things that you would aspire to do. One of the things that I struggle with still, I don't like getting my picture taken and I don't like giving public speeches, but I've learned to do it well because people want to take a picture with you and, and it's an honor. I mean, it's lovely to be part of people's family and, and for them to want to take pictures with you and their children or their parents. Um, and learning to speak 
helps send a message. So I watch people who give good speeches and I think, how can I do it better? So one of the things I like to do is to tell stories. So if I get to know my residents and they tell me stories, sometimes those stories end up in my speeches. So people need to be careful <laughs> when they tell me stories. But I think people remember what you're talking about more if you can tell a story. Uh, it helps them understand what you do. But what I would tell people mostly is don't be intimidated by people like me in this office. I started out as a volunteer in the community, and we need young people. In particular, we need diverse populations to come and run for office. We've been very successful federally and provincially. I got five South Asians who are representing Brampton extremely well in Ottawa. But in municipal politics, it doesn't happen. And I think it's because the South Asian community in particular doesn't think it's powerful. It's very powerful. In, a, in one case, in one vote in our first year, one person decided we weren't getting light rail transit to Brampton. That was $400 million in investment that didn't come to Brampton. So it's a very important decision. And I, I'm going to try and encourage people to run because I need to be replaced someday. And I want a secession plan. I want someone to think about doing the job, to lead the community, and to be a great champion and advocate for the residents that are to come. Mary Val said, thank you so much, Mayor, for talking to us today. You're welcome. And we wish you all the best and uh, let Brampton soar to better heights under your reign. Thank you. Thank you. So that was the Mayor of Vibrant Brampton, Ms. Linda Jeffrey, who has inspired us to connect with our community to take it to better heights. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Thank you for watching us. Continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and write to us at spotlight at ethnicchannels.com. Until next week, this is Amita signing off, encouraging you to take your community to your own spotlight. <laughs>